Hello, thanks for watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking about how plus size friendly Dorney Park in Wildwater Kingdom are. Dorney Park is located in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And I actually had a request from somebody asking if I've ever been there, wondering how plus size friendly the rides were. And that's how I decided to do this video as my next theme park to cover how plus size friendly the rides are. I've been doing this series for a little while now as a plus size guest and coaster enthusiast and theme park lover. Sometimes it's not always easy to enjoy the rides that are at a theme park. Um, so these video series is just designed to help ease your nerves and just talk in depth about every ride that Dorney Park and Wild Water Kingdom has to offer or every ride that another amusement park has to offer. Um, other videos you can find on my channel that I've done were Cedar Point and Cedar Point Shores. I've done Kings Island. I've done Hershey Park. I've done Holiday World. Um, I have more to come. It's just kind of a slow process to get these types of videos out. And because it takes so long to actually do them. Because I have to stop and remember, hey, how did I fit in this ride? And talk about it and then, you know, get pictures on every ride or whatever, and then refer to their website to make sure I don't forget rides. So basically a lot of effort actually goes into making one of these videos. And I know they are long, but it's because they're in depth. And I want to be in depth just to go over everything about the park. And if you have a suggestion for a specific theme park you'd like me to do, if I have been there, I can do it. And I've been to a lot of theme parks, so, um, I've probably been the one you're referring to if it's in the U.S. or Canada. Um, because that's what I like doing and that's my hobby. Um, so basically, again, just want to talk about every single ride here. If you have more questions, just comment below. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Um, and just some starting stats. I have not been to Dorney Park in years. Um, and I've only been once. It wasn't particularly my favorite theme park I've ever been to. And honestly, I just haven't really had the desire to go back yet, but so I'm going to rate my memory and see what I can remember from the best of my knowledge about this place. Um, some starting stats just to kind of give a little bit of reference. Um, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think I was here when I was around 250, 250 pounds, and I'm five foot six. And most of my weight is carried in my um, hips and my stomach, especially my stomach. So that's just to give you kind of some reference points. So when I talk about the rides in reference to me and stuff, that's how it's going to fit. So let's just start off this video by talking about the roller coasters at Dorney Park. The first coaster I'm going to talk about is Possessed. Um, there's a coaster that's just like it at Cedar Point called Wicked Twister. Um, reverse train system should be the same and everything. And I did not ride Possessed when I was at Twenty Park, but I have rode the Twin Wicked Twister at Cedar Point, and I don't fit. Um, it's an over-the-shoulder restraint, and I'm pretty sure it has to buckle into a seat belt or something too to the seat. Um, it's not forgiving at all. If you have big hips, you're going to have problems getting back all the way in the seat. And if you have a big stomach that gets in the way of shoulder restraints like I do, or if you have a um, bigger chest area, you're going to have a problem getting in possessed, though. The good thing is that there is a test seat out front of possessed to try um, before you wait in line and waste time or have to do like a walk of shame. The next coaster I'm going to talk about is Still Force. Um, I don't think I've been to Dorney Park since 2010. I, I'm thinking, and then I'm, I'm like 90% sure. Um, Still Force, I don't remember having an issue with this ride. I'm pretty sure I was able to ride and I really liked the coaster. Um, Still Force, it's going to have like a lap bar and seat belt. Um, so, I mean, again, if you do have a big stomach, you may have some issues, but um, I don't recall having any issues with Still Force when I rode. I was able to ride it okay. 
There is not a test seat out front for it, though, but to my knowledge, um, it should be okay to ride. This next coaster is called Thunderhawk. It is an old Woody. It was built in 1927. It's going to be 100 years old soon. Um, it's crazy how this coaster has withstood the test of time. I'm very happy it's here. It's very historic. And I actually do enjoy Thunderhawk. Um, for it being its age, I think it still gives a good ride. And it's a Woody. You know, um, there's going to be a lap bar with a seat belt. The seat belt, this is pretty long. Um, the lap bar, um, I don't think you'll have an issue with it um, unless you have, you know, pretty big hips or thighs or a big stomach. I remember riding it okay with no issues. There's not a test seat, though. But um, it's made by Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters. If you've ever rode the racer at Kings Island or Blue Streak at Cedar Point, um, similar train cars. I is so and if you've been able to ride wooden roller coasters in the past, I don't think you'll have too much of an issue. I feel like this one may be a little bit squishier than some because it's just older. Um, but I didn't have an issue fitting in it myself. The next two coasters I'm gonna talk about are Hydra and Talon. And they're both made by B and M. Bollinger and Malabard, and they both have pretty much identical restraint systems. They're both over the shoulder restraint, um, the buckle comes in between your legs, and it buckles like that. And both of them do have a test seat out front. Um, I mean, I do have a preference personally. I, I, if you were to ask me my favorite between the two, probably have to say Hydra, but they're both really great coasters. Um, again, with having a test seat out front, definitely utilize that test seat. These coasters, um, you're going to have an issue if you have a bigger chest or a bigger stomach. And if you have really big hips, you might have problems scooting back all the way in the seat to get uh, yourself buckled there. Um, I did fit, needed a little push from the operator. Um, even though I did fine like the restraints are identical um i remember having more trouble in one than the other but then when i rewrote it i didn't have any trouble as much so it was really weird because you know seats can actually vary i can't remember if these coasters have the b&m big boy seats as some parks do have those for the b&m coasters um it's been so long since i've been there i can't remember um, but when you go online, it should tell you, and usually they're marked by a red seatbelt instead of the black if they do have them. Um, but again, with my figure, I was able to ride both of these. Um, I needed a little push from the operator, but I was able to get in them. Next up is their Wild Mouse at Dorney Park. And the Wild Mouse ride, it fits 680 pounds per car, max two adults per car. And it's a shared lap belt um, that goes over you with the seat belt. Um, I don't recall having an issue getting on a Wild Mouse. It's like any other Wild Mouse. If you've been on them, you know how they fit, how they work. Um, I don't recall having an issue. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think most people will be okay unless you have, you know, a really big um, waist that may interfere with the lap belt. Um, but other than that, you should be okay to ride the wild mouse. This next coaster is Woodstock Express. It's more of a kids slash family coaster, mainly for the kids. Um, the maximum seat width is 30.5 inches across. You have to use a shared lap bar with seat belt. Um, this is going to be an extremely tight ride if you're a bigger person as an adult. This one, probably better just to let the kids ride. Um, the nature of the ride, it's just more made for kids or someone who is extremely skinny. This here is Demon Drop. Um, it's kind of like a drop tower type ride. Um, you're going to have like a shoulder harness, buckles with your chest. Um, I don't remember having too much difficulty with this. I think the seat was a little narrow. Um, but other than that, I didn't have an issue fitting in Demon Drop. Um, it was a pretty enjoyable ride. I actually really liked it. Um, I mean, if you have really big 
um, body proportions, you may have trouble with demon drop. It's not exactly the most accommodating ride, but I do remember being able to ride it with my 250 pound, five foot six, figure and stomach and hip stats. Next up, we have another drop tower like ride. This one is called Dominator. Um, this one again has an over shoulder restraint, um, buckles in between your legs. And this one, um, I remember being tighter than Demon Drop and having to have a little help, but I was able to ride. Again, your issue area is here. If you have a big chest, you may have issues, big stomach, um, may have issues um, when that shoulder harness comes down on your stomach. Um, the other one, um, other than that, um, I don't think it was too tight on my hips and thighs when I rode it that long. This ride here is called Enterprise. Um, my best advice for this ride is I don't think many people have an issue if they ride by themselves. Um, the cars are not gigantic or huge or anything like that unless you're riding with um, you know, a really skinny person. Um, my best advice was just be asked to have a car to yourself. They will let you do it. I've done it before um, and that way you can ride more comfortably um, and not have to get off because you can't fit with your friend or whatever and still be able to um, enjoy the ride. This ride here is called Meteor. Um, it has an over to the shoulder restraint so again you could have an issue if you have a bigger chest um, or you know a big stomach like I do it always over for shoulder restraints always hit in my stomach. Um, this ride, I do remember being able to ride at my current, the stats mentioned before, um, I did have to have a ride operator at Pushdown to help me fit. The good thing about me here is, though, there is a test seat out front to try before. This ride here is called Revolution. Um, this ride, I remember, I don't know how I did it, but the first time I didn't fit. The second time I tried it while I was there, because I really wanted to ride it, I did fit, and I don't know how they made me fit, but it was pretty tight squeeze. Um, it's because how the restraint falls on my stomach. Having a bigger stomach does not help at all. A bigger chest, too, with the restraint on this. However, the good thing about this ride, there's a test seat out front to try before you wait in line and possibly have to face a walk of shame. And I always recommend if there's a test seat, just try it. Um, if somebody's sitting in the test seat, just politely ask them to move. They will. Um, that's what it's there for. Don't let anybody make fun of you or tell you you can't use this test seat. You can. And therefore, you don't have to waste your time if you don't fit in this ride. Again, um, big, big um, uh, chest area or big stomach area can uh, make it kind of tight to fit on this ride. Right here is called Thunder Canyon. Uh, this is one of those rides as long as uh, meet the height requirement, the whole family can ride and have a ton of fun. Uh, individual seat belt for each seat, and the seat belts are really long. Um, I don't foresee many people at all having a problem on Thunder Canyon with riding. And your whole family can ride too, as long as you meet the height requirement. Uh, my grandparents would ride something like this too. It's just one of those types of rides that everybody loves. This is Whitewater Landing. It has a shared lap bar that goes across like um, your lap area. Um, however, this ride is not tight at all. You should not have any, nobody should really have any issue um, fitting in this ride at all. Um, and it's a pretty fun ride, very accommodating ride. Thunder Creek Mountain. I really like this ride. Well, I really um, like log rides in general. This is one of those uh, type log rides where you sit one behind the other. Um, there's really um, no restraint systems. I mean, you sit in the seat and uh, you hold on to these um, like rail bars on the side. If you've ever seen a ride type like this, they're pretty much all um, very similarly designed. Uh, nobody really should have an issue fitting in this ride whatsoever, and you should have a fun time. The rides here that should be accommodating for anybody are the Zephyr Train, as pictured here, and the Cedar Creek Cannonball. They're both trains. Um, they're going to be accommodating for pretty much any rider. This is Apollo. Um, I don't remember having an issue fitting or riding on this ride. There is a shared lap bar and seat belt. If you are concerned maybe about how you're going to fit, 
you can always ask to ride by yourself and they will let you so you might be able to fit a little bit easier in Apollo. Next up is the antique carousel. There's no uh, weight restrictions on it for the horses or the chariots. Um, so anybody should be able to ride the antique carousel. Next up is Cedar Creek Flyers. These were actually not there when I went to Dorney Park. However, from the information I pulled up on their website and information that I know because I've seen rides just like this before, um, on per their info, the maximum weight is 340 pounds per uh, bird or car. Um, it's going to be a shared seat belt, and um, the seat belt's really long, though. The main thing to worry about here is just that uh, weight restriction. This here is Dodgem, their traditional bumper cars. Um, no, you shouldn't have an issue fitting or riding this one. They are Ferris wheels, pretty much accommodating for anybody of any size. The only thing to note is you have to have at least two riders per gondola, and there's a maximum 1,050 pounds per gondola. This is Monster. There's several of these types um, of rides at other amusement parks around that you may have seen. They do recommend a maximum of 400 pounds per car, and sometimes that metal bar jabs into my stomach, you know, but I'm able to fit fine. It's just kind of uncomfortable. Um, I've overloaded this before and nothing has happened. However, that weight limit is there for a reason. Don't recommend you overloading it. This is Kaleidoscope. They um, did not have this when I went to Dorney Park, but I've seen this style ride at uh, places like Kings Island and have rode with no issues. They do recommend the maximum weight limit of 330 pounds on this ride. Um, the lap bar and seat belt was no issues accommodating me. Um, if weight limit's always a concern or fit though, you can always ask to ride uh, by yourself and they will accommodate that. This is Music Express. It's a traditional uh, Himalaya style ride. You've probably seen them several different places. Um, they're pretty accommodating uh, with the lap and seat belts. I found them to be no issues with fit. The maximum weight limit of this particular ride though is 495 pounds per car. This is called Road Rally. I've never rode this, however, uh, per their website, it says the maximum seat width is uh, 18 inches. Um, and this reminds me more of a ride that you'd ride with your kid if you had a kid. Um, so it can get a little squishy on this kind of type of ride, I can imagine, but there um, is no weight limit. It'd just be something you'd have to look at and kind of judge whether you think you could uh, fit or not. This is the Scrambler. It's going to be pretty much like every other Scrambler ride out there. Um, it's very accommodating to fit. There is a 510 pound weight limit per car on the Scrambler, but other than that, you should not have an issue fitting in the seatbelt or long on this. This is Sea Dragon. There is like a shared um, lap bar that goes across everybody's lap in the row. Um, you should have no issues fitting in this ride. There is a 680 pound weight limit per uh, row though, however, so just be mindful of that. This is the Tilt-A-Whirl. I've always liked the Tilt-A-Whirl. Um, they're always very accommodating no matter your size. Um, there's a shared flat bar for all riders in a seat and the only other thing to note is each car has an 800 pound weight limit. This is the Wave Swinger. You're going to look at a 230 pound weight limit per seat, so that automatically disqualifies me from riding. Um, but it's a traditional, you know, swing ride. The seats themselves aren't huge either, but the most mindful thing is that 230 pound weight limit on this. This is the whip. You may have seen our, um, other rides that look just like this, other whips at uh, different parks. Um, the shared I uh, believe black bar, or maybe a seat belt, two per seat. I don't remember having an issue fitting. Um, but if you're worried, you can always ride by yourself and they'll give you uh, more room to ride there. These next rides I'm going to talk about are in Planet Snoopy. Uh, the only ride in Planet Snoopy I've talked about so far is the Woodstock Express because I prefer to talk about all the roller coasters together. So, I already talked about Woodstock Express towards the beginning of this video. 
Um, this first ride I'm going to talk about in Planet Snoopy is called Camp Bus. Um, this ride seats 440 pounds per seat. Um, a shared lap bar and a door that closes. And if you can see by the picture, that door is really narrow. Um, I'm not sure how far down the lap bar goes, but the 440 pound weight limit. And I mean, if you had a kid and you wouldn't exceed it, always try it um, to see if you do fit in it though. Charlie Brown's wind up. It says on their accessibility guide online that it only accommodates one adult per swing, which I'm trying to figure out how it even accommodates two kids per swing, judging by the picture, but apparently it does. But there's a maximum weight limit of 275 pounds per swing, so that's the uh, biggest thing here to worry about. This is Flying Ace, a 660 pound weight limit per row on this ride. Only accommodates one adult per row, and it says there's a shared lap bar for each uh, row. Um, it looks like it could be kind of a tight fit, but that's something you'd have to uh, check before riding. This is Flying Ace Balloon Race. Um, 550 pounds per uh, balloon, up to two adults per balloon. Um, individual seat belts on this one. Um, then seat belts uh, should be pretty decently long, um, not as decently long as some of the other rides like the Scrambler, um, but pretty decent length on this. But the main thing is that 550 pound weight limit. This is called the Kite Eating Tree. Um, one adult per ride is allowed. This is going to be really tight. Not only you have really narrow seats, the lap bar is shared for all riders. Yeah, so if you can't tell by the picture, it's going to be um, a pretty snug ride. Us bigger people probably not going to be able to ride it. This is called Linus Launcher. Uh, it's 275 pound weight limit per unit. Only one adult is allowed per ride. This looks like it'd be really, really hard to fit in, really uncomfortable for one. Also, um, I wouldn't advise us bigger people to try this one. And you can if you want, but it doesn't look like it's going to be accommodating at all. This is the Peanuts 500, uh, 275 pounds max per car, one adult max. Um, this looks like it would be a really tight squeeze, though. This Paul is just going to be one to let, watch sit back and watch the kids ride it. This is Peanuts Road Rally, 500 pound limit per vehicle. Um, a, one adult must sit in the back and there's going to be um, a seat belt. I'm not sure about how long the seat belt may be. This looks a little bit more accommodating than some of the other rides in Planet Snoopy. However, again, because it's more designed for kids, you can't expect a super accommodating ride, but this may be one of the um, better ones to check out. This is Sally Swing Set. Maximum two adults per row. There's actually um, a pretty high weight limit per row here, though. Um, my concern with this ride is that it's a shared bar. And to me, if you have even remotely big thighs, it's going to hit them and you're not, you're going to be pretty uncomfortable. The seats look very narrow as well. Um, this again, maybe just one to let the kids ride, unless you're smaller. This is Snoopy's Cloud Climbers, and those bigger people don't have to worry about fitting on this because the maximum height is only 54 inches. This is Snoopy's Junction. It's like a miniature um, kitty train ride. Uh, the maximum weight is 440 pounds on locomotive and 825 pounds each in other cars. Only three adults in each of the other cars or two adults can ride in the locomotive. Um, the locomotives, um, I think a little bit smushier just because it has that um, hood over it. Um, the other cars are not that smushy and I'm pretty sure the seatbelt is pretty long. Snoopy's Rocket Express here. We have a weight limit of this of 780 pounds per car can only accommodate up to two adults per car. Individual seat belt that I'll come across um, your lap there. 
Um, I'm not 100% sure about the ride fit or anything. It'd be something you'd have to look at when getting there. Um, it looks like it may be a little smushier um, if you're bigger, but it's just something you'd have to look at and use your own judgment. This is Woodstock Whirly Birds. It's kind of like a traditional uh, teacup saucer type ride that you've probably seen in other parks. Um, this does have a maximum of two adults per car, 550 pounds. There are individual seat belts here. Um, as long as the seat belts are pretty long, I don't think ride fit will be an issue on this ride. Just be mindful of the weight limit. The very last ride I'm going to talk about, not only in Planet Snoopy, but in the main park here, is going to be Woodstock's Wagon Wheel. 440 pounds per gondola. Um, it says there's a shared seatbelt that comes across the whole row. Um, it looks like it could be kind of a tight squeeze. I'm not 100% sure as I have not rode it. Um, you know, be something to look at and kind of use your own judgment on. All right, starting out with Wild Water Kingdom. I like to just go ahead and start by saying that Wild Water Kingdom, the issue is not going to be how big you are as far as fit. The issue that you'll run into is weight requirements. Some slides don't have, I'm not 100% sure, it varies by place to place. I don't think they have scales on the slides. However, I don't recommend you go over the weight. However, if you know the weight limit's 300 and you usually run around 298 and that day you're at 301, uh, don't fret, don't worry about it because it can accommodate more than that. Because some days, you know, I fluctuate in weight too. A lot of people do. Um, it's not going to bust and nothing's going to break if you're a couple pounds over. Um, but the weight limits are in place for a reason, whether, you know, we like them or not. I feel like sometimes they are a complete nuisance. I really do. Um, but they're there. We have to. We should be obeying them. Um, but let's go ahead and start out by, I'm going to name some attractions that you can ride regardless of your size, regardless of your weight. You're welcome to do the Island Waterworks, Runaway River, the Wave Pool, Wild Water Cove, and the Wild Water River. This here is called Agua Blast, um, 800 pounds per raft, maximum of four riders, minimum of two riders. Um, so you can split your uh, riders up however you want, as long as you're between two and four riders and no more than 800 pounds per raft. Following rides and attractions have a weight limit maximum of 300 pounds per single rider. They are Agua Racer, Jumpin' Jack Splash, Patriot's Plunge, the Snake Pit Slide Complex, the Speed Slides Complex, and the Wild Water Rapids. Lightning Falls permits single riders only and each single rider you cannot exceed 230 pounds. This is Cascade at Dorney Park. It has a weight limit of 230 pounds for a single rider or 400 pounds for the double rider tubes. Uh, these next two attractions here are not suitable for bigger guests. If you're above 54 inches tall, you're not allowed on them unless you're accompanying a child under 54 inches tall. These two attractions are called Kids Cove and Lollipop Lagoon. Well, this concludes my uh, plus size rider's guide to Dorney Park video. Uh, I hope this helped ease some of your fears, helped with any questions. I know these types of videos and types of um, content is pretty hard to find. Um, I'm more than happy to do these types of videos if y'all like them. Um, if you have a suggestion for another theme park you're maybe wondering about, let me know below. And I can definitely see about doing it if I've been there. Chances are I have been there. If I've not been there, um, from all the theme parks I've been to, I've gathered a lot of information about different uh, rides, how you fit in different style restraints, stuff like that. I still might be able to uh, pull a video together. If not, at least try to answer your questions for you. Again, I hope this was useful. Let me know below if it was. Um, again, any questions, comments. And if you're not subscribed to me, subscribe to me. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. And again, I thank you very much for watching this.